Gavin Morris. Did you actually see uh, the charge down by James Graham on Adam Reynolds? Yeah, I saw the contact out of the corner of my eye. Obviously, Gav was standing mm. uh, directly behind it, so he had the clearest view of I don't have a clue what this what's going on, but I was recommended this video um, to watch. First of all, I like that the the player in white actually tried stopping playing. You know, he knew there was an injury. Um, completely accidental. Of it, um, and he called to me at the time. Obviously, with a field goal. Oh, attempt, he just he turned just bent his shin almost. Direction the ball's going in, um, and then at that point, yeah, obviously we we stop with the injury um, and take the opportunity to knowing the gravity of the decision and where the penalty was going to be yeah. to make sure oh. we're absolute. Oh. It's just it, it's where he's made contact with the foot that's planted and obviously the, the foot that's planted can't move anywhere because the studs are in the ground so that that did look a little bit nasty Certainly but not intentional the the All right, just on the penalty I mean it would seem that you're, you're probably the only one in the game today who knew the rule the, I mean the commentators didn't I didn't sitting at home none of us did no, Daryl do you no, know no. no so the, everyone's going well, why isn't the penalty out where you know where the ball landed but you knew the rule yeah look it's a little unusual but um, I'd love to say that it's because I had some sort of photographic memory, but it was a conditioned response, really, in training on a daily basis. We're put under... That seems a strange rule. Uh, a foul can be committed all the way up, up you know, in the defensive end. However, because of the foul, they then get to kick, you know, through the post. And you think... There doesn't seem any logic in that. Like, strange logic. You can probably tell me I'm wrong, but it just seems strange that a foul can be committed so far away and then you get all of a sudden to kick. Strange. A photographic memory, but it was a conditioned response, really. In training, on a daily basis, we're put under a lot of physical and mental stress and have rules questions thrown at us. And I reckon probably in the last three years... I've answered that question of a field goal, charge down, contact scenario a dozen times. So when it uh, actually happened on the field, I guess there's a bit of muscle memory, really. I think it's a good... That's interesting. That's interesting because... Um, so he's saying he's had this incident a few times, so, so he's used to it. He knows exactly what to do. And there's always... Um, it's very easy to... Well, for people, it's very sometimes easy to learn what the laws are in the book but as soon as it happens on the pitch sometimes it's quite tricky especially when it's your first few times of it happening to identify what the law is um but it's interesting that obviously he's had plenty of t plenty of goes at it so he knows the law and it's interesting that the um the pundits and whatnot didn't actually know and the commentary didn't know what the law was um but I think that's something that happens in, in, in a lot of sports, especially when laws change. Um, it's Yes, it's knowing it and you get told about it, but it's knowing when it's right to implement it on the actual pitch. Point to make because, you know, Todd, you've come out this year and said coaches cannot question referees, you know, after the game. A lot of people think, well, are these guys not accountable for their actions? But you're incredibly accountable, aren't you? After each match, you're reviewed, you're asked questions. Your performance is, you're under pressure every week to how you perform. Our match officials are extremely uh, held to a very high account, and, and so they should be, just like players. But equally... Are we getting something different with football here, as in soccer football? Um, referees being held to account. I've got no problems with referees being held to account, as long as it's done correctly. Um, the whole mic, you know, referees being mic'd, like rugby, definitely. I think that's perfect. You're going to have a cat jumping up in a second. What I've been saying all year is that there's got to be a certain base fundamental level of respect for these guys. Uh, they do a very, very difficult job in very tough circumstances, none more so than Friday. And on Friday, the gentleman next to me, he got it 100% right, uh, but still copped a significant amount of criticism afterwards. And um, speaking of that... So I've been doing a lot of, um, obviously, rugby content, rugby union. Um, it's interesting to say, obviously, this is this is down in Australia. But he's saying, you know, the referee got 100% right. So what is there to argue with? How, what, why is he getting stick when he did everything correctly? 
is that I don't know if it's if that's a difference with the southern hemisphere to the northern hemisphere, but why is he getting stick when he's done the job perfectly? Seems strange. That decision on Friday night. Let's take a look now. At what you were subjected to at the time. I can, I know, and everyone keeps saying this, these laws are in to keep people safe. I understand that. But, oh man, you keep getting these, I keep seeing these situations where there was no content, uh, there was no um, intent of, of causing any harm. He was literally putting his arms up and diving forwards to stop the kick. I can, the problem is I can sort of understand why he's annoyed. You know, he's, he even did the right thing to stop play because he knew, you know, he'd hurt. And, and it just makes you feel bad for him. However, <laughs> I'm assuming what happens next is a very bad discipline. definitely feels bad that they, that they can get a kick on goal. I don't like that law. That seems strange. He's not leaving willingly. He's going back for more. This is literally like football. I really like the fact, actually, that the referee is not coming across like he's intimidated. He's holding his ground. He's still speaking calmly when he's got this big, massive bloke screaming at him. That's impressive for the referee. Um, I'm going to assume um, there was there was post-match repercussions for this behaviour. Um, but fair play to the ref. Fair play for his, his demeanour. Yeah, all these players complaining, assuming that anything's going to change. Honestly, he knew the laws of the game. He implemented it correctly, whether we agree or not. You've got to remember as well that if you did the opposite of that call, made the opposite call, then you probably lose your job, don't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. I mean, in, in those big moments, um, as referees, we understand the pressure that players are under. Um, but we're under pressure in those big moments too. So, and the thing is also is that at the end of the day, even though it was an accident, and Jimmy Graham did not mean to hurt anyone, but he did. So that's why it's black and white, no contact with the legs, and that, that's what everyone kind of failed to understand at the time. Yeah, look, it, contact like that is dangerous. Um, that's not my directive. That's something that's been in the game for a number of years. Um, as a group of match officials, that was actually an easy decision for us to make. It was the only decision we could make. Um, obviously, the fallout and the hysteria that follows is a little bit harder to deal with. Jared, did, did you consider throwing James Graham in the bin as well when you sent Clemmer off? Yeah, look, with uh, with Dave Clemmer, obviously... Well, I'll find out what he says in a second, but I assume that's the other big bloke screaming at him. That is probably the only thing wrong, in my opinion, that he did. He did not simp in the other guy as well, because he should have been gone. In my face and using that language... Um, that was just an automatic reaction. It was almost instinctive. I didn't really think about that. Um, and that's the problem. Dave Clemmer, um, 
and then uh, sometimes you've got so much running through your head that and I think situation in retrospect you well, should have done it Simbin him for example and I get that in football did it play on your mind that if you would have sent both of them off for 10 minutes that the crowd could erupt there could have been drama is that one of the I mean I might be giving you too much credit here for, oh, for look, not, not so much the crowd I mean I, I don't really factor in those external sources um, but the level of angst that was there on the field I did have concerns that if at that point um, I had a Simbin James and I might have been Simbinning three or four others and we would have got to a point that was a bigger fight. <laughs> yeah, because there probably wasn't just one person That's screaming at him. I've seen a rugby league from a, a captain to a referee. Did you feel, I mean, he's, he's a big man, he's a tough man. Did you feel intimidated at all? You didn't look as though you did. No, I, I didn't really. Um, you know, as I said, in those pressure situations, I guess the difference between a referee and a player is that we referee without emotion. Uh, we're quite detached. We don't care what the result is. Oh man, he literally sounds like me. When players when players are insinuating, I'm giving more to the other team or or, or things like that. And I stress, I don't care who wins. You know, it could be a you know, I'm a Southampton fan. I could be refereeing Southampton. I could not care if they win or lose. Um, and that goes with any team. You know, I I don't. <laughs> Just because, for example, if you have if you referee the same team multiple times in a year, and there's a player that gets on your back, but in that one game, that's it. The second game, you know, it's a fresh. Um, I would like to think all referees are the same. Maybe not. Maybe some subconsciously they're not. But we don't care who wins, who does what. Players need to realise this. They really do. I can appreciate how it's very difficult for a player to compete on every play, to invest so much in it emotionally, and then to be totally calm and composed when he approaches a referee. Um, that, I don't know if I can do that. Um, but in that moment, um, I, I knew it wasn't personal. I know now it's not personal. Um, but unfortunately, you know, my job is to make those decisions without emotion, regardless of the consequences. And that's what we did. What about coming off the field? How did you feel? Were you fearful then? Because I was scared just watching David Clem. I get scared just looking at James Graham and David Clem. So yeah. surely coming off the field, you were shouting the, the bottles, there was coins. How did you feel then? Mate, I started refereeing in the bush. And <laughs> to be perfectly honest, I've had uh, situations there where I felt in a lot more danger than I did on You just don't get scared, don't you? Can't, you can't scare oh, we'll go, we'll go. <laughs> um, This is the problem with refereeing. And, and this is highlighted even in a different sport. Once again, I'll link it back to football. You're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. In this example, uh, Gerard Sutton followed the law. He followed the law. He, he, Like he said, he had one option. That was it. He had to take that option. You can understand, and, and I think he's saying this, you can understand um, the player getting frustrated. You know, there was no intent. However, as you guys say in the comments in about Rugby Union, the laws are the laws. Whether you like them, whether you agree with them, whether you do agree with them, the laws are the laws. Um, and you, you abide by them. Um, and at the end there, they talked about um, feeling threatened and whatnot. The difference is at this level, same with football, you have, you have your other, well, I say football because I know about it. You have your two linos, so straight away there's three of you. Um, you sometimes have your fourth official, so that's four of you. You then also have the stewards around the ground, and the stewards are also there to, to keep keep the referees protected almost. They will happily walk on with you and walk you off the pitch. Um, not so. It's not so simple at the lower levels. Um, so I had a comment earlier. Uh, about me comparing football to rugby and whatnot. And obviously the videos I'm doing are professional level quite often. However, yes, there are different pressures. That's the thing. There are different pressures. Um, when you are doing amateur football, um, you are on your own. You are on your own. So if you behave and you act in the way that, uh, that Gerard Sutton did in this match, you do everything by the law, you don't have the protection. You don't have the support around you. Um, we, we sh I showed that in the, the Bulgarian football video where the referee was chased off the pitch. I think this, this decision 
was in the law. What a fantastic job. Let me know, guys. Um, is there a difference in Northern and Southern Hemisphere in regards to discipline and behaviour? Um, is that a, is that a, is there more of a difference? Uh, let me know, guys. Now, if you enjoyed, hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. You know, if you hit the like button, it tells Go uh, Google, it tells YouTube, same company, um, that you enjoyed the video, and hopefully more people will be able to get to see. Um, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.